Okay, a little bit of a different setting here today. Uh, trying to do the intro, failing like at least 20 times now. <laughs> oh god, these things are never easy to do. But anyways, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a lure out of uh, pine bark and some feathers. So stick around and I'm going to show you how to do something a little bit more primitive that uh, you might be used to. So, Without further ado, let's head out to the forest and uh, start gathering some pine bark. So here in Finland where I live, um, it's not that difficult to find pine. It's actually really easy because we're basically surrounded by the woods here. Um, but you sometimes do have to walk around a little bit to find a suitable candidate for a fishing lure material. So what you're looking for is these really thick pieces that um, usually the older trees have. It's also relatively easy to pry off these bigger pieces with a knife, but of course using an axe would be even better. Which I do actually have too, but I just didn't want to take it with me because it weighs a lot and I wanted to trek lightly. And second of all, this is a very popular area to take your dog for a walk and uh, coming across with a dude wielding an axe in the forest uh, might freak someone out. Before starting any work with the pine pieces that I harvested from the woods, I let them dry for a week in the sun. Then I just started roughly taking off the excess material with a knife and uh, turning these into more rectangular, more manageable pieces that I can start working on and um, making these baits out of. Next I need to even out the surfaces with a sanding block that I made and uh, the sanding paper that I have on here is uh, grit 60, so very rough stuff. I'm gonna split the pieces that I just sanded into two, but before I can actually do any sawing I need to mark where the sand line is. Next I need to take down the thickness of these pieces that I just sawed into two into 10 millimeters. And before that I need to mark down where the 10 millimeter thickness is and I'm gonna take off the side that I just sawed into two and then I'm just gonna sand it flush. I decided to pair off all of the pieces that I just uh, sanded with another one so that the overall thickness of the bait I'm going to be making later on is going to be the same. Next I'm going to start cutting the profile of the bait and I've had this uh, template for I don't know how many years now. It's been quite a few and um, it's proven to be a very successful shape for me. And of course this is very traditional kind of like uh, elongated teardrop shape that a lot of these uh, trolling baits here in Finland are basically based out of. Of course there's different variations of this, more skinnier and some of them are more uh, fatter versions of this, but uh, mine is probably in the kind of like in the middle ground there. But uh, I've never done a pine bark lure out of this shape, so I'm actually kind of excited to see how it turns out. And you know, the, one of the most appealing things about using pine as a material is that it's really easy to work with. All you need is a knife and some sandpaper and you're pretty much golden. In order for me to keep the bait batch a little bit more consistent, I decided to make this small tool to help me keep the uh, angle of sanding at 90 degrees at all times, because of course I'm going to be joining these two halves together later on, and having a consistent angle helps a lot with aligning the two halves together later on. Now that I've sanded all the pieces, I'm going to start working on the through wire that's going to be embedded inside the bait. And 
I'm just using round nose pliers and just normal pliers to put in the bends and I'm just using this old bait that I have as reference point to uh, show me where I need to make the bends. I don't know if you guys know this, but the through wire as a concept and as an idea is actually a Finnish innovation that was first thought up around 1930s. And um, back then, a lot of people were kind of copying what the Americans were doing, and a lot of those baits have um, screw eyes in them. And that doesn't really work with pine bark, so the concept of uh, having a through wire inside the bait actually came up from there. The first instance of a through wire construct uh, that I know of came from this guy called uh, Toivo Pylväen, who was kind of eccentric hermit that lived on an island. He basically gave up on society and decided to just move there and uh, fish and trade with other people. And actually, interesting thing about him was that one of his fishing buddies was actually Laura Rapala. And he was actually the one who taught him how to make lures. And nowadays a lot of these baits that the hermit Tove made can be quite valuable because of their rich history and um, their rarity really. There's not really that many out there nowadays. And um, in auctions, uh, if you ever happen to come across one of them, they can go up to 2000 euros. Since I'm going to make this bait out of two halves, I need to make sure that the slot that I'm going to be making inside the bait later on is going to be identical on both sides. And my idea is that I'm going to press these two pieces together to make an indentation. So I figured it might be a good idea to glue the wire to the other half so it doesn't move. Now that the wire is uh, glued to the other half, it's really easy for me to just press these two pieces together to get that uh, identical indentation that I was talking about earlier that I will then later on gouge out and make much bigger to be able to accept that wire. So now that I have that indentation on both sides of the lure, it's going to be really easy for me to just use that indentation sort of like a, an anchoring point for the, for the wire so it doesn't move that much when I actually uh, draw out the outlines of the um, hole that I'm going to be gouging out later on to accept that wire better. Now that I have everything marked out, it's really easy for me to just use my hobby knife to slice a hole inside the bait. And I don't think you can see it from this angle, but I'm holding the blade on a 45 degree angle. And I'm trying to do that on both sides so that it becomes more identical. 
so of course you don't want it to be too uh, deep or too shallow on either side so it's dead on center Now that I have all of the wire slots done, I'm just gonna glue the two halves together by using five minute epoxy. And I did actually have an idea to use uh, pine resin as a kind of like an organic glue, but my experiments were a complete failure and it just isn't strong enough for fishing lures. And of course I have to have some even pressure uh, throughout the bait so that there's not going to be any open seams. So I just couldn't think of anything better just to, to use here than just rubber bands and they actually worked out really well. Now that the glue has dried, I can start working on with the uh, profile of the bait. And I just really didn't feel like having any kind of like rigid plan that what I'm gonna uh, follow here. And so I just went with uh, eyeballing the whole thing. And I actually like doing that a lot with uh, these kind of like one-off baits. It just um, makes the whole thing a little bit more organic and easier in a way. I usually like to have some belly flash on these trolling baits that I do uh, for Xander and any other kind of uh, predatory fish. So the cross section of this bait is going to be kind of like a V. Before I can do any kind of uh, decorative work, I need to make sure that the lure is completely sealed. And I'm just using a cap coatings uh, hard lure varnish to seal the wood. I think this is probably the part where most of you actually tune into the video to see me uh, coat these lures with uh, just using feathers. And I'm just starting with uh, silver pheasant. Now my original idea was to leave the wood completely untouched and sort of nude, but I soon realized that the feathers would completely vanish to the background because, you know, even though they're very brightly colored, they're still kind of transparent. So I just decided to coat the baits with, uh, with some white to make the colors pop a little bit more. The glue that I'm using to glue the feathers onto the bait uh, is uh, used for nail art. I actually don't really know what brand this is because the bottle that I have doesn't have any label on it. So I think probably any will do. Um, most of these um, nail art glues are water-based so when they dry they turn completely transparent so that's something that you probably want to have and of course i roughed out the surfaces before starting to glue anything on here so the feathers are not gonna pop off so easily and the glue has something to grab onto and as you can see when i'm placing the new set of feathers onto the bait i'm actually putting them a little bit on top of each other uh, this is just to make them blend together a little bit more so there's not going to be any kind of stark line between them so it makes everything look a little bit more neater i think the first time i heard or saw anyone using feathers in a fishing lure was this guy called uh, erik virolainen a finnish dude again and uh, he started making this uh, coastal spoon in 1980s uh, 
in the mid 80s I think uh, called Eve Trutta and uh, calling this guy prolific when it comes to color patterns it's uh, an understatement he has so many different color patterns it's absolutely ridiculous by the way after I was done with these baits a thought occurred to me that hey Instead of using your sausage fingers to uh, manipulate the feathers, it might have been a good idea to use tweezers to actually first pick up the feather and then place it onto the bait. It might have made things a whole lot easier, but sometimes when you're doing this sort of stuff for the first time, like I'm doing right now, you don't come up with these sort of things because there's absolutely no tutorials or anything like that, so you're kind of like fumbling in the dark and make it up as you go. Oh, and by the way, the type of feather I'm using right now is called a strong guinea feather. And I'm probably going to have a complete list of all the materials that I'm using in this uh, video in the video description box. Or maybe I'm going to pin it as a comment. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but uh, there's probably going to be some sort of list. But yeah, I can't think of anything else to say about the whole process of uh, doing this feather work. So I just didn't, wanted to actually include the whole process regardless, uh, so that you can see what it actually takes to make one.
Alright, I've now clear coded the baits a couple of times and then I decided to sand them down to have a much more grippier surface so that the eyes that I'm going to be gluing on right now are going to stick in better. Now that the eyes are glued on, I'm just going to dip these baits into cap coatings hard again and coat the lures with a couple of layers of uh, clear coat. In order to make the baits look a little bit more neater and give me less um, work later on, I usually always poke the holes free from clear coat. Here in my hands I have two different versions of something called a saddle lip. And the saddle lip has been in use here in Finland for a really long time now. And uh, I think the first lure that ever had this was a lure called Tulos or Tulos. Depending on what sort of era of lure you're talking about. Because it has had a lot of different makers throughout the years. And I'm uh, pretty sure that the first um, versions of this uh, came out in the 19 1950s and the 60s. And of course, later on in the 80s and uh, late 70s, there was another uh, lure that was very popular that had the same lip design called Jesse. Or if you anglify it, uh, it's Jesse. But uh, yeah, I think nowadays a lot of people know about this lip design because of uh, Robola scatter wrap. I'm sure you guys noticed that there's this U-shaped slot in the lip itself. And uh, the reason for that is that the commercial version of the versions of these lips are designed to be glued straight to the surface of the bait, which I find to be extremely dumb. So I'm just going to make a slot for them in attempt to make this construction a little bit more durable. Sometimes fitting these lips to baits can be kind of a pain in the ass and a chore, especially if you don't have any kind of jig to make sure that you don't uh, saw crooked or in a wrong angle. So what I usually do is I finish off the job with some sanding paper. Fortunately enough for me, I usually don't saw too crookedly and uh, if I do, uh, it's really easy to fix. Now that I have everything set and ready to go, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, glue the lips onto the baits. And I'm just using 5-minute uh, epoxy again. And I think it goes without saying that you wanna make sure that the uh, line tie is dead center on the lip. Quite a few mosquitoes here, so I think I'm gonna escape and get away from these block sucking creatures. Like a pro. Alright, let's go and get catch some Xander. Okay, I'm just about to go and do a little bit of fishing now, and uh, first things first, I need to tune these baits and make sure that they actually have good action and 
don't start veering off to the left or right. I think I'm gonna start with this one first. And it's probably a good idea. Well, somebody just got killed. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. All right, this is veering slightly, slightly to the left. No, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, slightly to the left. So, just have to make minor adjustments. Looking much better now. Still, it can went a little too far. Maybe just a tiny bit. And as you can see, it has this kind of like shaking action and it starts to veer off a little bit, especially with uh, higher speed. And that's what this sort of saddle lip actually does to baits. And that's why it's so popular, because it gives a, such a lively action to these baits. Yeah. Let's take it back a little bit, and uh, should be fine after that. Just a tiny bit. I to get a little too far. Let's see. Yeah, I did. Yeah, like I said, these baits can be very finicky when it comes to tuning these things. Okay, so. Much better. I think. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah, it definitely looks better now. Okay, I think this is one. This one is tuned, and we're gonna continue tuning the rest and try to catch a sander today. But I think since it's so hot today, chances of getting one are pretty high. All right. I've been uh, trolling for probably five minutes now. I'm uh, around nine meters of water. I didn't put any weight on on the baits yet because uh, sometimes when it's really hot like this, like it's right now, it's like plus 25. Uh, the zander actually comes to the surface and start feeding there, but just have to wait and see what happens. And you know, you never know. They might be deeper water too or actually right close to the to the bottom itself you just never know so you kind of have to uh, play around with uh, different methods and different depths too so hopefully i'm going to be able to catch something today would be pretty cool to actually take something home for a change haven't had xander for i don't know for how long long ago it was it's a really awesome eating fish, or awesome fish to eat, rather. <laughs> Anyways, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, stuff on the so sonar. Uh, nothing, nothing too big, but hopefully I'm gonna be able to find a school of Xander and uh, actually catch something. All right, fish on. Yeah, this is definitely a fish. Awesome. Please don't be a pike. <laughs> I really want this to be a Xander. Whatever it is, it's really small. Oh, I think I lost it. Oh, damn. That sucks. Uh, 
Oh well. Let's check the bait anyways. If it, if it was a pike, it probably is gonna... Oh, there's actually a fish there. What is it? Small pike, I think. Yep. Super small pike. Hooked on the outside of the mouth too. Which is not so awesome, but... Uh, at least... Uh, I know that the baits work now. Jesus. I think I put a little bit too many hooks on this bait. <sighs> get the jaw spreaders. At least I caught something. <laughs> That's good. Not the right fish though. Thanks for that. I'm actually feeling really hot so really, really actually thankful. That. <laughs> Thank you for that. Anyways, let's actually try the cat's sander. Right, I'm gonna do a bait change since I already caught a fish with this one. I'm gonna change this and see if I can catch anything else with the other ones. I think I'm gonna go with this one. One looks pretty cool. And what I think I will do with this side is, since this is it, it's almost 10 meters here now. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna put some weight on this one. And uh, oops. And see if I can catch anything from deeper water. <laughs> Is it swimming well? Let's try again. Good. Jesus, come on. Putting uh, 30 grams here. Let's see, hopefully that's gonna be enough. I am seeing fish on the sonar quite frequently, but uh, actually, I think I had something on that one. I think I just had a bump on that one. Anyways, uh, gonna keep on trolling and see if I can catch something. Is 
think I might have a fish on here. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, definitely. There's a fish on. Come on, be a Xander. Come on, please don't be a pike. Whatever it is, it's really small. I have a feeling that it's a small pike. Oh, it is a Xander. Awesome. It's a really, really small one though. Wow. That's a gift wrapping right there. <laughs> How am I gonna... Let's take this off. Let's start unwrapping this guy. Oh, it was a too small one to take anyway, so perfect release. Awesome. Seems like this thing works. Excellent. Well, I'm gonna try and catch a bigger, bigger one to uh, eat later on. So hopefully that's gonna happen. And we're just gonna keep on trying. All right, I have a fish on. At least I hope I still do. Yeah, I do feel some weight in there. Uh, not, it's not doing much of anything really, so I'm thinking it might be a Xander. If it is, it's not very big. Actually, it changed into a different color now. Right? Do I even have anything on here anymore? Yeah, there's definitely something there. It looked like a Xander to me. Oops. It's like freaking amateur hour here. Ah, oh, it's another pike. It's fun to catch these too, but... Whoa. I'd rather catch a sander. Yeah. Same size as the first one I caught. It was, uh... Let's try to get a sander. I think I'm gonna pack it in. Um, been out here for six and a half hours. Um, I did catch a couple of fish which were quite small, but it's still better to catch something than not catching anything, right? But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'm gonna head back home. I'm really, really tired. If not any anything else, this is a really good workout. But uh, yeah. See you guys in the next video. Yeah, it's definitely not bad being out here today.